Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank. Drilling down to what matters. There's a real moment right now where people are saying that they have the right to articulate their stories. A lot of previously marginalized voices are taking up this medium and working through things. Telling complex tales in a matter of minutes while creating a mood and marking the moment. And action. There are people who love to do the short film because it's so challenging, it's so compact, so focused, and that sort of hits you with a punch and you take a breather and say, I'm watching the next one. This is the new lens focused on Africa. It feels like maybe for the first time, African voices are owning African stories. These are South Africa's short films. This is Inside Africa. is an art house cinema in Cape Town, celebrating its 70th birthday. It's a venue much loved by South African filmmakers who come here to be inspired by cinema from all around the world. So the Lobby Theatre is kind of known as a more antique aesthetic, um, very old school style of movie um, watching that happens here. And it's also one of the few places in Cape Town where you can watch more art house films. But it's also one of the few theatres in South Africa where young filmmakers like Sandulela Asanda Biana can show their own work. I feel like a movie theatre space is about community and it's a shared experience of laughter, of cries, of emotion. Tonight, she's brought family and friends along for a very special viewing. Her film is on the bill. My film is Non Laose. It's a modern adaption of an old Kosa folktale about this young girl who has to stand up against her uncle who is basically abusing the trust and the beliefs of the community. It is. Thank you. Asanda is one of the talented young filmmakers whose work was selected for the Schnitt Annual Film Festival. It's an international event with screenings in eight cities around the globe. What's exciting is that a festival like Schnitt, uh, we have 35 South African films, each by a very different filmmaker, and audiences are coming together and being challenged by cultures, peoples, and knowledge that's outside of themselves. So African stories in a global space are, are changing the, the perception people have of the continent. This five-minute film is titled Scarp, simply meaning sheep. Whoa, I saw a good lady again. The director says the meaning of sheep is open to interpretation, but he points to sacrifice. So the film follows a young domestic worker who's been called by a mother after she can't you know, take care of this old man anymore. Um, she arrives at the house and you can, from the moment you see her, you can sort of see her dreams and her ideas and her hopes for the world sort of disappearing and narrowing as she approaches this place. And I think suburbia has that alienating quality to it for someone who's an outsider. Mzonke's films, like many others in the festival, are made on shoestring budgets. Unlike the commercial productions he works on to make a living, these are passion projects. It's interesting to see over the past couple of years the type of films that have been made and what people are doing. I think there's a lot of impetus and, and sort of energy towards telling real stories, things that come from these environments and engaging the tension instead of avoiding or evading it and, and, and trying to speak around it. Ten years ago, a group of filmmakers volunteered to host Schnitt in Cape Town as a non-profit venture. 
in the beginning it was a vehicle to show our films, our friends' films, and as we expanded the scope of the festival, we would seek out South African films every year. Was it? Was it? Was it? Despite small budgets, these short films aim to make an important creative statement. I think African filmmakers are taking that power back and are defining their own gaze, their own perspectives, and the world is responding. So I think we're seeing a real shift in the perception of African cinema and in South African cinema, and that includes audiences too. Author Lauren Bierkus brings a unique perspective to the festival's jury panel. Her novels are international bestsellers, translated into many languages, and some are being adapted for film. My books are inspired by my South Africanness. You know, growing up under apartheid as a white South African, I don't just have white privilege, I have white South African privilege. And I'm very aware of kind of the socioeconomic issues, um, race and gender, you know, I'm very intersectional in my work. Um, and I, I'll always be writing from that perspective. As a judge, Lauren gets to watch a cross-section of new work, animation, you know fiction, documentary, and what moved her particularly, films of poetry. It was just so beautiful to hear these voices and to hear these young women and these young poets kind of speaking for themselves. Look into my eyes. What do you see? As a woman of color, I see strength, strong in my culture. This cinematic statement, entitled The Story of a Baked Brownie, is only minutes long, but has won an award internationally. see beauty, beauty in my original layer. It's such a beautiful piece about women of color realizing the power they have, becoming women they've always wanted to be, just embracing who they are and having confidence in themselves. So what it tackles is the idea of colorism, but in a very positive manner. Look into my eyes. Casting the characters took six what months. El Alwani sought out women for her film who understood her message. I see the life in me. El Alwani says this has been her most ambitious personal project to date. She's drawing from her experience on larger commercial film sets. When I grew on international productions, I work as a script supervisor. That has really opened up my world. To fund her dream of one day making a feature film, El Alwani must travel where the work is. She's constantly on the road, flying between jobs that take her all across the country. In South Africa, we're all kind of self-made because we have to be. You know, there's a big service industry, so we work on a lot of other people's productions, but there's not really a way for people to kind of rise up the ranks, to become directors, to become scriptwriters, and to be able to get onto the international stage, which is why I think short films, festivals like Schnitt are so important. A screening here at the Labia in Cape Town is an important first step for young filmmakers hoping to make it big. To survive him, I grew tall as a sill, too wild for any man or beast to keep. I think I wrote my first Oscar acceptance speech when I was seven. I mean, this was inevitable. I, th I feel very um, privileged that I've always known what I was going to do. Ahead, the ambitions of a new generation, reclaiming history through personal stories. Thinking of banking in Africa, think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however.
a bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People. Technology. Service. Zenith Bank. In your best interest. In Emirates business class, you hardly ever see anyone doing business. Wonder why. Fly Emirates. Fly better. We try to be global and we try to be smart. What I want to hear are authentic voices of people who are passionate, who are intelligent, and that's the consistency that we try to get at. For Reed Zakaria GPS, Sunday on CNN. Cape Town lies the sprawling township of Kailicha. In its midst is a small cinema called Bertha Movie House, a participating venue in the Schnitt Short Film Festival. And I think what's so exciting about that space is they're trying to ignite cinema culture in a township space and film bridges gaps and we didn't want to be a festival that was based in the city playing for city urban creatives. There's so much more to Cape Town. Huleng Stewart is showing her film, an interpretation of a poem called The Jaguar's Daughter. It's about absence and loss of a father figure within the life of a young woman. And so I've set it here in South Africa, in Cape Town, obviously, but it was written as a Trinidadian poem. Here lies your memory. Here stands your daughter, sharp-toothed and hungry. I think fatherlessness is a very large problem globally and in South Africa specifically, and um, I don't think it's a hard stretch to um, to realize what an important issue that is to deal with and how it forms people's lives and especially of girlhood and womanhood. Before he left, he bought me a bird's skull, smaller than my paw. The poem resonates with what? Puleng. A young mother herself, she lost her political activist parents as a child. I was brought up by women. Men in my life, were never familial until I had my own family. I woke up one day and I, and I have these amazing men around me, um, and I didn't, and young boys, and I didn't expect it. Come, you can do it. And I think there's a big challenge in what it means to raise sons. And what does it mean to raise good men? Filmmakers are grappling with questions raised by South Africa's apartheid past. Imran Hamdule made a film about the legacies of his community. I think in Cape Town specifically, we have a Muslim community that is still wrestling with historical injustice. Um, and in doing so, trying to find the identity as South Africans and as Muslims. And, and, you know, the marriage of those two. I feel a responsibility as a filmmaker. I don't want someone else telling the story of my people and my culture and where I come from. You know, the Muslim community in South Africa is unique in terms of its place in the world. Imran's film is called Fatima. It's the tragic story of a young girl who defies an arranged marriage. My visual design, my visual approach to the film was to um, build large spaces around Fatima especially. It feels um, claustrophobic, uh, you, you're, you're struggling for air, and what we did was we wanted to isolate Fatima in the frame, and we did that through the spaces she occupied, so whether that was her home, um, the mosque, um, the graveyard. 
my responsibility as a filmmaker is to be introspective, you know, is to ask tough questions of myself and the world around me. Um, and the world, my world, is made up of my faith and the faith of my family and the people I, I grew up with, the community I come from. In a nearby suburb, Puleng and her musician husband are taking responsibilities onto their collective shoulders. Yay! I'm going to be having residents in here. Uh, it's going to be a making space. And then through here, this is going to end up being a uh, set building space. I'm all about self-reliance and figuring out skills. So I'm hoping that I can create a space where people can do that. It's primarily a space for collaboration. In this moment in history, on this planet, as a species, we need to learn how to give space and build together. So again, this notion of collaboration is about labor. These young creatives inhabit very different worlds to their parents, politically and technologically. I think a large part of why, you know, it feels like there's a movement happening right now in South African cinema is that the nature of film has been democ democratized. You know, cameras are easily accessible, equipment is not as expensive as it used to be. The resources to make a film doesn't lie with a small group of people who used to be mostly white men. You know, now you can shoot a film on your cell phone and at the end of the day, it's the story that matters. I think what's kind of underpinning what it means to be young right now is a real interrogation of what has been conceived as standard up until this point. I think we're a very interesting generation, but I think that it's a reaction to a very unstable world. It's in this unstable world that actor and director John Carney has left an indelible mark. He's agreed to be a judge on the festival panel and a mentor to young filmmakers. That's the role of art. It's the most powerful weapon for change. So these short films hit you quickly, quickly hit you like that and it wakes you up. Next up, Once Upon a Time, what the veterans hope to teach newcomers about storytelling. <laughs> Thinking of banking in Africa? Think Zenith. In today's fast-moving, fast-changing world, you need a financial partner that understands your unique expectations. A bank with presence in major financial centers across the world, with the enabling platform to facilitate seamlessly, whenever, wherever, however. A bank with best-in-class financial solutions from a superb combination of technology and human touch for easy, fast and secure banking that creates real value. Turning dreams into reality is now in your hands. People. Technology. Service. Zenith Bank. In your best interest. There are all kinds of smiles. The I am blessed smile. The caught you smile. The not a care in the world smile. And the wish I were a child smile. Kirloska, behind a million smiles, silently and reliably. This is the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. From here, we'll bring you the events moving the business world. The Express, weekdays on CNN. As the president's lawyers make their arguments in the Senate impeachment trial, the Democrats hoping to replace President Trump make their closing arguments to Iowa voters. The latest in the trial and on the trail. State of the Union, Sunday on CNN. It's day eight of the Schnitt Short Film Festival in South Africa, and young filmmakers mob one of the country's most famous actors of screen and stage, John Carney, here to judge their work. It's a rare chance at access. When I got called to be part of the chair of the judges, it was incredible. I was so excited because 
it exposes you to where the new trends are, what young people think now, what the, the, the film industry of South Africa, where it is going, is almost putting a finger on the pulse. Today, screenings are taking place in the very theater where John Carney started his acting career. Known simply as The Space, it made a name for itself during apartheid, defying authorities with political dramas and multiracial casts. In 1972, I said to my father, I want to be an actor. And he said, like who? <laughs> <laughs> and there were no references. He said, well, like John Wayne? I said, no, no, not that. It is my starting point as a professional to prove to my father that this thing called acting that I want to do, it's not because I'm lazy or I can't get a job, it's because it's becoming a profession, a calling, something that I truly believe could make an incredible impact in changing the society through the arts. Considered a pioneer in the performing arts, today John Carney is a celebrity who's made it in Hollywood. From working on stage to working both in front of and behind the camera, he still feels the pain that comes from creating art. It's a journey. Nobody writes a hit. I learned that long ago. I've just written a new play, Kukunene and the King. Friends, Romans, countrymen. On the opening night, I couldn't breathe. My tongue was blocking my throat. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> and when it got five-star reviews from all the London newspapers, I felt like, OK, I can still write. I can still write. And you, that encourages you. John Carney's career is a masterclass in success. But for those just starting out, the Schnitt Festival provides an important platform for getting noticed. Short films are also such a great place for filmmakers to find their voice. And a lot of what we do is showing films by filmmakers that are poised to break out on the global arena. This skateboard park is Schnitt's venue tonight. There'll be a mix of international and South African films showing on a pop-up screen. I think people are often surprised by what they see out of South Africa. Films like Scenes from a Dry City that's in our in international competition this year uh, really blows people's minds. The idea a city could be so high and dry, pardon the pun. One of the films featured is a mini documentary that dove deep into a city in crisis. It deals with the water crisis in Cape Town last year and it uses that crisis to highlight enormous social disparity in the Western Cape. Go to those overpriced hotels down the road. You can run that bath water until it floods. There's no water crisis there, but I bet you you've got no water in your house. I bet you've got no water in your house. They predicted the taps would run dry, that there'd be kind of methane gas building up and pipes and explosions, and schools were going to be closed down, and it was going to be cholera and typhoid. I mean, it was a huge thing. It was a kind of a, it's the kind of thing that would make you rethink your relationship to order and to society and to the people around you. Fighting the Forgive our sins. Bring rain to the land. The documentary describes the social impact of a crippling three-year drought on the southernmost tip of Africa. Since then, the rains have fallen in Cape Town. The directors are now collaborating on a new project, but their film stands as a reference and a reminder of when the taps nearly ran dry. I think uh, it would be naive to think that things are totally okay again. So I think the, the lessons learned over that period have been, have been important. It really does pose a very important question, like what are we going to do when there's a lot less water in the world? Like, are we prepared to accept that climate change is here and it is about to affect billions of people on this planet? That's why the film's successful. It gets a telescope out allows you to look into the future, and the future is crazy. Not all Schnitt films will travel as far as scenes from a dry city. It's already been screened around the world in about 50 other festivals. But whatever the budget or length, all short films aim to transport their audience, if only for a few moments, to an intensely personal space. 
Why are you doing this? The short film is about the internal expression of the soul in reacting to the environment that the being finds itself in. They tell stories. The basis is basically simple, is once upon a time. And they are dealing, each writer, each director, each sort of company is dealing with immediate issues that are current in the new changing South Africa, in the new South Africa that is trying to define itself in a space after 25 years to find out did our project called democracy work. When I talk to my fellow filmmakers, not just filmmakers, fellow writers, artists, we're always talking about the present moment laced with memories of the past. We're not ignoring, you know, our history as people and understanding how that will create our new history of cinema. And that's what really gets me excited, um, is that we have a blank slate and we are the writers of our history now. Inside Africa, in association with Zenith Bank.